My name is Jordan Simon Fleming. I am the CEO of Smartphone, and I'm delighted to welcome everybody to this webinar today, which is uh, really launching uh, our integration with Forefront. And on me, uh, on the webinar with me tonight is uh, Don Costa. Don, uh, for those of you who don't know, uh, maybe coming in from the smartphone side, um, Don is a real estate investor. He's an educator. He's a podcast po podcast host. I can't speak tonight. And of course, he's also the CEO of Forefront. So um, the agenda tonight is we are going to dive in. Uh, we've been joined tonight by Maria from the Smartphone Customer Success Team, and we're going to dive into a little um, uh, demonstration of smartphone in action with Forefront. Uh, then I'm going to give a bit more of a talk about smartphone and its capabilities and how it's really been built and a lot of functionality has been built for the real estate investor community. I'm going to pass it over to Don after that, where he's going to dive a little into Forefront and, and his plans for that and how Forefront is designed to help real estate investors. And then finally, we'll do uh, a little bit of chat about the integration itself and how we work together, uh, how we've got plans to keep expanding that. And of course, answer any questions you have. Let's dive in. Uh, Maria, welcome. Uh, thank you for joining us. If you wouldn't mind sharing your screen, we'll pass it over to you and you can give us a little demonstration. Okay. All right. Well, welcome guys for the um, demonstration of how smartphone works inside Forefront. So I'm going to start sharing my screen and then show you how it really works inside the Forefront CRM. So first is, of course, some of you are, are familiar with how smartphone looks like. So this is gonna be your dashboard and it has a full integration with um, Forefront CRM. So we connect to the pipeline and with the comps, comps inside Forefront is where all the logs are shown. So here, let's say this is, this is the regular dialer of smartphone. So first is you can dial through here since we have a full integration with Forefront all the contacts or all the people from your pipeline will show here. So let's say I'm gonna start calling Lauren Kent. So I can start calling through the regular dialer. I have the option to make a phone call here or send a text message. And then next is, of course, um, one of the important feature of smartphone is we do have the click to call Chrome extension. You need to make sure that it is added in your browser and pinned on the top of your um, Chrome browser. So what it does is it makes your whole browser a phone system and allows you to call inside Forefront. But first you need to make sure that inside Forefront, your one click calling is properly set up. So you need to log in to Forefront, go to your account profile, and then make sure that you scroll down to one-click calling and enable one-click calling on this part. Now, once you have that all set up or enabled, you'd be able to call inside um, Forefront. So let me show you how it looks like first inside the regular dialer. So let's say I wanna call this person. I'm going to go click dial. I'll have all the functionality in here. I can put on my note. After the conversation, I can still continue the um, note, finalize call, and then you can choose from your, uh, you can choose a call status. You also have the option to send an SMS. Send a message. And then it will all be recorded inside the forefront comps. So as you can see, the last person that I called today is Lauren Kent. If I click on that record, it will show that actual note that I sent or that I made during the phone call, as well as for the outbound call, I can listen to the recording inside forefront. And then you even have the um, option to download or you know, play back by speed. So those are the options that you will see inside the Forefront CRM. Now, if you are inside the CRM, you can go directly to the pipeline, look for someone that you wanna call. Once you have the click to call Chrome extension or the one click calling enabled inside Forefront, you'd be able to see these options. So you have the call button here. 
So once you click on that one, it will open the Chrome extension. You'll have this pop up here. You can click on the Chrome extension. Type in your note, finalize call, select a call disposition or call status. And then you'll have the option to send an SMS as well. And then from here, the last person that I call will still show on the comms. So as you can see, this is the last person that I call using the uh, one click calling or the click the call. And then it will show you this um, note as well. So those are the highlights that you can do inside smartphone and um, how it works or how it connects inside Forefront. <laughs> uh, Maria, thank you so much uh, for uh, showing us around. I appreciate that very much. Um, as you can see from Maria's uh, demonstration, um, you know, one of the most important things uh, about smartphone and, and really uh, one of the core ideas we had when we when we built it is that we want to deeply integrate with our CRM partners. And we were really excited to begin the integration with Forefront um, because we knew it was a great opportunity to fully integrate, not just with the system, but inside their user experience. And um, another thing I just wanted to kind of uh, talk a bit about in terms of the smartphone element is that smartphone really, uh, real estate investors are one of our core constituents. They're one of our larger customer bases. And because of that, we develop a lot of functionality for the real estate investor market. So um, within smartphone, not only do you have the standard smartphone uh, phone system, which gives you your core communications, your uh, phone calls, inbound, outbound, text messages, voicemails, that sort of thing, as well as a fully comprehensive mobile app, which lets you do all of the phone calls, text messages, and everything on the go, fully linked to Forefront. Um, we also have Smartphone Pro, which is a, a more advanced call center that you may want to use if you've got multiple agents and you work maybe in multiple markets, because when you level up with Smartphone Pro, you get things like um, uh, geocaller ID matching, which allows you to, uh, you know, the system will match area codes as you're dialing without the need to manually change numbers. It gives you opportunities like call monitoring, where you're able to listen into your agents. Um, uh, you're able to listen, you're able to whisper instructions to them, you're able to barge into the call. That's hugely useful if you're training new agents, or if you've got uh, you know, if you're doing some quality checks of your agents, and you also have some more advanced uh, functionalities like the ability to add multiple people to a call. And a way that I've seen that work really well for investors is when you've got, uh, you know, maybe you've got a, an out, uh, outside VA doing some calling, uh, cold calling or, or kind of follow-ups, and they get a hot lead on the line. Well, you don't want them to set an appointment with your inside salespeople. You don't want to to get let that person off the phone and so if you've got smartphone pro you're able to your agent is able to put that hot lead on hold um, dial out into uh, maybe your inside sales or as an acquisition specialist inside the team uh, bring them into inside uh, smartphone tell them a bit about the lead connect that call inside smartphone and then they can leave and let those two carry on and everything is fully logged um the second part that I just wanted to talk before I hand over to Don and talk more about the forefront side is that we've also got smart dialer inside of smartphone, which is a one to four line power dialer. And it's fully integrated as well with forefront, which means that you can bring in lists, uh, you can upload lists into smartphone directly. Um, and then when you've got a lead that is uh, converted or is verified, you can push them straight into forefront which means that you are able to keep your forefront CRM clean, but use the power of a four-line, multi-line dialer to get through as many calls as you can and try and qualify as many prospects as you can as well. And we are constantly adding more and more features in conversation with people like Dawn and Forefront and our integration partners, where we learn from our customers. Um, in fact, we just had a 
Q&A with our customer base two days ago where we got to get feedback and ideas of things they'd love to see executed. And we build out functionality inside of smartphone based on feedback, both from people like Don in Forefront and from customers. So you, it's your opportunity to have a real impact into kind of designing the phone system of your dreams. Um, so smartphones got a lot of scalability for you, and it's also a very cost-effective way of getting a fully integrated communications platform into Forefront. Uh, that's my sales pitch of what smartphones all about and sort of the, the ways we help investors now. I'm going to turn it over to Don so he can dive a little more into Forefront itself and his plans uh, for taking that forward. Yeah, I just want to say something about smartphone first before I do that. <clears throat> we actually became a customer of smartphone in 2018, I believe is around January, 2018 or the end of 2017. And um, one of the reasons we did is because, and at the time, you know, smartphone was a newer, if I remember correctly, it was kind of a newer, um, you know, company. We were having challenges with the competitor and the competitors call quality. And when we searched to try to find something that would help us with call quality, smartphone became the obvious choice. And when you're trying to have conversations with sellers, um, you need to be able to have um, that call quality be there so you're not stepping on each other and talking over each other and that kind of thing. So uh, we ended up switching to smartphone in 2018. Um, in 2018, I ended up market, taking my marketing to a whole nother level. We sent out 1.2 million postcards in 2018, and we were able to do split testing and so many really cool things with the smartphone system. Um, and being able to track our marketing and keep track of what was working and what wasn't working and and uh, be able to go back and pull data to see, you know, basically where our deals were coming from. And, um, and we were able to redeploy our marketing dollars in 2019 from the data we gained in 2018. And smartphone was a huge component to making sure that we understood our numbers. And um, so it's been an integrated part of our company since 2018. And it's been one of the main tools that we've used. So when when I came into Forefront in um, the beginning of this year and became part of the Forefront family, um, smartphone was just the obvious choice, um, you know, as a company that we wanted to be um, in line with and a, a system that we wanted to utilize as a tool for real estate investors within the Forefront community. So um, I just want to give a huge, huge shout out to the smartphone team um, and the work they've done to help this partnership come along and become what it is. I know there's always going to be work moving forward. Um, I'm learning fastly in tech that nothing is ever perfect. <laughs> it's always a work in progress, but the smartphone team has been ex exceptional when it comes to making sure that things come together the way they're supposed to. So I want to appreciate so show my appreciation to you guys for that. Um, when it comes to Forefront, you know, I became part of the Forefront family in January of 2023, this, this last year, so it hasn't even been a year yet, and um, I took over ownership of Forefront, and um, and I, I did it because it was something that I believed in as a product, the way the product is set up and designed is set up to basically be your whiteboard that you are able to see what your process is in real time when it comes to your leads and your lead, lead flow. So, and um, uh, unlike some of the other systems out there that are can be modified to work for real estate investors, but be clunky and a little hard to navigate. Um, Forefront is one of those tools that is, you know, easy to navigate, easy to operate, and it makes it very visual. And I'm a very visual person when it comes to where things are happening in your system. So Forefront as a tool, um, we're always working on the back end to make it better. But as a tool, I feel like it's the best CRM out there. It's one of the easiest CRMs to use. And ultimately, at the end of the day, we're only going to make it better. Some of the cool things we've done recently while we've been working on the partnership with smartphone in tandem, we've added comping to the system. You can actually comp within the forefront system. So when you're on a call, you get a call in on your smartphone system and you're on a call talking to a seller, you can actually in real time comp that property while you're talking to the seller. We have property history reports. You can actually real time look at the, the transaction history on a property to see is this something they just bought recently? Have they owned it for a lot of years? What are the, what's the loan information on the property. So you can actually make decisions in real time while you're on a call. And we have hot lead indicators as well. Does it have a tax lien? Is it um, a bankruptcy? Is there something on that property that indicates that there's some underlying motivation that maybe the seller is not telling you? So 
we have a lot of really cool features that in the system and a lot of really, really cool features coming. And I'm excited about this partnership and this relationship. And just ultimately our goal, I think, and I, I know that Jordan will back me up here, is we want to make it so easy for you guys to make money with what we have to offer you. Hey, we did this almost autopilot that you can put a team in place uh, and to do it for you, that you can put systems and processes in place to make your life easier. And that ultimately you can just create a money making machine and sit back and watch the money come in. I, I do like the term money making machine and sitting back to watch money come in. Uh, <laughs> absolutely. Um, now, Don, just, you know, in terms of the, the one of the things I'm really excited about the integration uh, with Forefront is, and, you know, particularly kind of, because of your background itself, you know, I mean, mm -hmm. one of the things, uh, and I speak as as someone who who runs a software comp company. So, uh, but one of the things about technology is there are sometimes there's sometimes a tendency to focus more on the clever technology than on the use case and you know the real world. And I think smartphone mm -hmm. is an example of that doesn't suffer from that because we listen so much to our customers. And I think Forefront, now that particularly now that you've joined the family and your team uh, with that much real estate investing experience and educating experience and, you know, um, I think you've got a, you're going to bring a really uh, real world understanding to a CRM system like Forefront. Can you tell us a little bit about how sort of the, how the experience, not just as an investor, but as an educator kind of informs what you're able to see in the market and how you can translate it in the future to forefront? Absolutely. So I think one of the biggest challenges uh, with, with um, first and foremost, uh, not all software companies, but some software companies, they try to create a product to fill a need and they've never been from operated in a user's perspective. So the user interface is built from what they think is the obvious choice and not within the reality of what a user is going to be facing. And so forefront from the, from its inception designed by Danny Johnson, who is an incredible individual um, has designed forefront to really operate from a user standpoint. Um, Danny was a, and is a real estate investor. So um, it has that aspect of it. Um, and then going into, you know, just from an operation standpoint and, you know, I've been in there, you know, playing around with it and doing deals with it and stuff like that myself. And, and just like what's complicated and what's not complicated, like where can we streamline this and, and cut that out so we can make your life easier um, is, is been always um, the process that I've been looking at from the moment I stepped in, you know, what, what can get your lead from the phone call to the close you know, and, and not cause brain damage is really what we want to do and make it obvious and make it obvious from a business owner standpoint, if you're starting to grow a team, how to manage that team and look at that team. So there's things that we're looking to integrate. One of the things is I've been doing real estate investing for 20 years. Um, I've operated high volume teams. I've operated small teams um, and looking at from the coaching standpoint as well um, is we're going to make sure that while we want to make sure there's bells and whistles in there that excite the user, we're going to make sure that Forefront does what the user needs and not what they always think they want, if that makes sense. And sometimes there's a disconnect there with what you think you want may not always be the best thing to, to have in your business. And so we're going to find that balance of what gets you excited that you want, but what actually gets things to the finish line for you. And um, I think part of that discipline um, the desire to make sure we meet the customer's needs, the desire to make sure we make the, the simplest process to make you money, and then the yeah. desire to make sure that we're disciplined and not just trying to please everybody, um, you know, is going to be what's going to create a great product at the end of the day. And I think everybody will will see that, and a lot of people do. So, Absolutely. And, and it's funny, you know, <laughs> this idea of what people want and, you know, uh, our, one of our biggest tenets in smartphone is listening to the customer. And, 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 you know, listen to the customer, listen, whether it's live on the QA, which we did, we do every month on open QA yeah. for anybody who wants to come in and speak directly to me and Ellen and, and a number of our team that come in. Um, but that informs our development in a big way. And I'm going to give you two examples of things that are coming up right now that come directly from listening to what our real estate in particular customers want. And there's two features that are going into beta right now um, that I think are a great example of this. Number one, um, we have, we are 
as of very, very soon, going to be integrating uh, full video calling into smartphone and the mobile app. And let me explain why we did this, because, you know, everybody's like, oh, come on, you know, Zoom, are you trying to replace Zoom? No. Here's why, because we listened to the investors and I was at a conference a few months ago and I talked to a bunch of people. And one of the things we talked about was, what if you could be on a call with a seller? You know, you've got them on the line and they're at the property and you could just say, hey, do you want to switch? Can we just go to video and you can show me? And you could, you, and you can, you, inside your mobile app, you're on the phone, you're in your car, you're hopefully stopped because clearly you're not allowed to call uh, when you're driving. But, you know, you do that and you can switch to video see, you seamlessly. It sends them a text message. They click a link, nothing to download. They pop on a video call with you. And with the pro version of video calling, when it comes out of beta, that call video will be able to be recorded and in your CRM associated with your lead seconds after it's done. And that... And that came from talking to investors and saying, have you know, have you ever been able to do something like that? Jesus, no, we've only ever been able to call. That would be amazing. And the second thing that's coming out and going into beta right now is we have heard time and time again from investors the challenges they have with communicating to their precious buyer list, right? They've spent all this time developing a really good buyer list, but then they're trying to get the properties they have to them easily. And of course, with compliance and with challenges around things like that, it becomes a problem. Well, with smartphone, we are launching a beta product um, called Broadcast, which is actually going to let you bring your buyers into smartphone, your buyer lists into smartphone, uh, track consent, opt-in consent, so that it is golden lock solid. And then you'll be able to, um, in an A2P compliant way, send bulk messages to your buyers about properties you have to sell. Now that's something that has been a hot topic for years, but nobody could, you know, it's always been a problem with around compliance. We've worked really hard to do this because we've got investors clamoring after it and saying, how can we do that? And I think it's a great example of how both companies listen to people mm -hmm. and are building things that people want. 100%. And that that falls in line because I know that the, the two things we're working heavily on right now are, are basically um, user reporting and user controls within our system and um, Dispo. And Dispo is is our next big hurdle. <clears throat> so it's neat that you guys have that coming out because that's going to, I have a feeling where there's going to be some synergy there on our back end with our Dispo process within the system and what you guys have to offer um, to really, I think, throw some fuel on the fire there and, and get some people excited. So very cool. It's very exciting. I, I love the video interface thing too, because I mean, that's right now, especially with COVID, like we've closed everything over the phone for years. And with COVID, um, it forced a lot of people to close everything over the phone. And one of the things that our team would do was would, would be to um, FaceTime a, a seller, you know, and have them walk through a property. So to be able to do that within the system and have that capture into the lead is a game changer. I just want to throw that out there. Well, I'm, I'm excited by it. And I'm particularly excited that it's going to be fully integrated into the mobile app. Because it's one thing to be, you know, sitting at the desktop and having the screen open and being able to do that. That's great. But let's be honest, mm -hmm. a huge amount of uh, investors, particularly if they've, you know, if they're starting out or if they've got a smaller team or if they, or it's their team that are doing the sales calls, et cetera, huge amount of them are on the move all the time. And the, the fact that with the mobile app fully, our mobile app being fully synced in with Forefront means not only in a traditional sense, you know, someone calls in, you see who they are. Oh, great. Fantastic. I can answer it. The call is logged in forefront. You call out, you can just go into smartphone, find the person you want to call. Boom. Everything's logged. The recordings, the call status is in forefront. Same with text messages, same with voicemail. But imagine then to be able to do that with video as well, seamlessly with no friction to the seller, because you literally just send them a text. They click a link, they pop on, and everything will be fully available inside your CRM. I think that's a, I think it's a really exciting thing. And I think the mobile app is one of the things because it's so fully synced with Forefront gives a huge flexibility and power to a lot of teams. I agree. And, and I'm excited to see it happen. So um, very cool. Well, like I said, I mean, I, I'm excited about the relationship. I'm excited about the things that we all have coming forward. I think that with this partnership, people are gonna be able to make a lot of money 
And, uh, and I can't wait to see the checks when they do it. So, um, you know, our, our mission at Forefront is to make sure that we absolutely continue to innovate and provide tools. I know your mission at Smartphone is the same thing. And I think that the future is bright on both sides when it comes to what we have moving forward. So, Well, at this time in the webinar, you know, one of the things we always like to do is make sure we uh, give anybody on here a, a chance to ask any questions because... Otherwise, it's just Don and I talking. And well, of course, I enjoy talking with Don. Uh, it's not really a, a fair to the people who may actually have questions. So, um, you know, what I would like to do right now is open it up. Uh, if anybody has any questions, I think we've got a chat that you. Yeah. Are you that so we've got so Q and A. We've had a couple. Hi, everybody. I'm Ellen. I'm the CMO um, of Smartphone. So we had a couple questions uh, go through the Q and A. Let's just say them out loud. So uh, the first one is, how do you handle call recordings? Are is that automatically enabled? Um, so that's a question really for you, Jordan. How does call recording work inside of Smartphone? Uh, sure. So inside of, of Smartphone, you are able to. Uh, so, um, what we have a very comprehensive uh, call flow management inside of smartphone. And what call flows really mean is what happens if someone calls in? What do you want your phone system to do, right? Do you want it to call this group of people in a round robin? And if nobody answers, go to an external call center or do you know, like how, how is it being routed? What is it doing? And of course, one of the options that you have is you have the ability to turn on recording so that on some lines you can have it, you know, full flows, you can have it not on and some you can have it on depending if you've got, uh, you know, some certain phone numbers you don't want to have happen. And of course, you also have the ability uh, on an outbound point of view to turn call recording on and off. One thing I will say is um, you don't have the ability on a call to toggle back and forth. Um, it's something that we've talked, we look at occasionally. It's not really a hugely requested feature, but at the moment, it's sort of an on and off state. It's either on and enabled or it's off. You can't toggle it as you go. Um, great. And then sounds like somebody's very excited about Forefront and wanted to know what do they do if they have a different CRM and are interested in switching to Forefront, but they want to keep their smartphone account. Uh, I'll answer from the smartphone side. We do have um, the ability. So if you are a smartphone user already, great. Thank you. Um, and we do have the ability very easily to uh, essentially unplug from your existing CRM and plug into Forefront. I will say that that will essentially route all future traffic into Forefront. But what we don't do is take any data you have in your existing CRM and transfer it over. We don't we're not the data re recording, you know, in terms of whatever CRM you're using now, we can't control what's in there. Uh, all we do is unplug and plug it back into Forefront, but it's seamless. It's super easy, super quick, and super painless. And just from personal experience, it does transfer your, I mean, all your numbers come with it. Your users come with it. Um, it all, it all does transfer seamlessly. So, yeah. <laughs> it just doesn't take data from your existing CRM and move it to Forefront. That's not something. When you, when, when you say data, you mean the lead, the leads and stuff that are in your yeah, or the CRM. call yeah, logs yeah. that's yeah. in yeah. inside whatever mm -hmm. CRM. The good news right. is your smartphone account stays the same, so everything's there. Your users, your call flows, your numbers, all the the history you've built up in smartphone is still in smartphone. It's just we don't take it from your old CRM where we've logged it and push historical stuff into forefront. Yeah. Great. And uh, from, from personal. I was saying, for personal experience, you can't run both CRMs at the same time, just so you know. <laughs> it's either yes. one or the other. <laughs> yes, so, yeah. smartphone connects to one to one yeah. at a time. Uh, this one is for Maria. Maria, would you mind resharing your screen and showing how texting from inside of Forefront, what that looks like? Mm -hmm. Yes, so if you are inside the pipeline and you want to send a text message to a contact, just go to, let's say this person, and then of course you have the click to call and the click to call activated or installed to your browser. We have this um, SMS or text icon here, right beside this call button here. Just click on that one, select a specific number. Then you can select from your phone number and then you can send your message here and then click on send text. 
And then this actual message will be recorded inside the comms as well. So if you go back to the comms, as you can see, this one will show us outbound text. And then I can review that by clicking on the record and then it will show the actual message that you sent to the lead. Awesome, Fantastic. thank you. Um, Jordan, I feel like this one was tailor-made for you. Can you talk a little bit about whether smartphone and forefront work in Canada? And if there's any particular privacy laws you need to know about. That seems unfair to tailor that to me, but- uh, uh, You're I, Canadian, uh, what I, the heck? <laughs> <laughs> I've lived in Europe for 25 years, uh, but no. Okay. Um, yes, uh, so uh, smartphone actually works in, I'm not entirely sure how many countries at this point, um, many, 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 uh, uh, like most, <laughs> um, but uh, it does work in Canada. Um, and you, but you do, so for instance, uh, compliance wise, uh, in the US, you've got very specific compliance rules around uh, both voice calling in terms of DNC protocols, uh, when you're allowed to make calls, uh, stir shaken, which is a, an, is a verified voice calling. Uh, and, and you also have a lot of compliance or structure around text messaging as well in terms of uh, when you're, how long you're allowed to text someone uh, if they're not communicating back and uh, what's called A2P10 DLC, which is a uh, US carrier initiative uh, that is essentially uh, aimed at making sure they can verify uh, who's sending a text uh, inside the US. Um, and it, by the way, just as a side note, if you are in the US and you are sending texts, um, you have until the end of August to be fully A2P 10 DLC compliant before text messaging gets shut off for people who are not compliant. So as an aside, if you are doing that and you haven't done it, do it. <laughs> do it now, do it tomorrow, do it tonight, whatever. Uh, in terms of Canada, Canada does have specific regulations around, you know, there are actually specific uh, Canada can spam regulations for email and, and for calling and texting. Um, I will put my hand out and say I'm not as familiar with them. I do know that Canada is working on its version of A2P 10 DLC right now. And so I suspect you should, if you are in Canada, of course you can use smartphone and forefront, but do know that legislation and compliance is tightening around the world. And I suspect Canada is going to follow the US in both the stir shaken and A2P frameworks. Um, and then we had a question in here that said, can you please recap features? Uh, this is Oscar. I don't know if you want to come on online. You're welcome to raise your hand and we can do that, but I'll read it out loud for now. Um, can you please recap the features directly related to Dispo? I'm the Dispo Manager for my company. I'm looking for more options with responding and communicating with buyers um, and tracking it. So I get a large number of communications on any given day. And uh, also when and how do I implement this into my current environment? So- uh, Don, um, do you wanna start with the Dispo elements of Forefront? Well, I, I will be the first one to say that at this time, um, Dispo as an individual unit within Forefront is something that is not available. We are working on that right now. You still can Dispo deals within Forefront. It will track conversations and leads and, and, and will track conversations with um, contacts. But to have it be its own kind of segmented tracking with KPIs and that kind of stuff, um, we're not there yet. We're we're a few months away. So um, I'm more than happy to get the team to go through what we are capable of, and it may meet your needs right now. Um, or you can also work with us to help us and be part of our prototyping as far as what you are looking for. If there's not something else out there, then since we are working on that right now, we could probably build some things out that will suit your needs that you won't find anywhere else. So I'm really excited about the Dispo stuff you're working on right now. Um, I'm super excited about that because, um, you know, Dispo is an under appreciated side mm -hmm. of the whole process. Everybody thinks, everybody talks all the time about filling the lead bucket. Like, you know, I got to get pipelining, got to get leads, mm -hmm. but it means nothing if you can't convert those leads and, and make money off them. And, and, and the disposition is where you're going to make all your cash from a smartphone perspective. Um, obviously, you know, the great thing is, 
Um, there, well, there are two great things. Number one, because we're fully integrated with Forefront, you know, as Don said, any contacts, yeah, anybody were, any communications you're having are going to be pushed right in. And, and so you've got that seamless element. Um, as I say, when I talk to people about disposition um, using smartphone, there are two, two kind of big things that come away with. Number one, of course, just being able to, or three big things. One, just logging the calls, text, et cetera. Two, the ability to use smart dialer to potentially um, you know, reach out to a list of their buyers uh, if they've got a hot deal, because one of the things I've noticed is, you know, when you've got a hot deal, you want to hit, you want to really hyper target the disposition, the buyers who are likely to buy that property. You want, you don't want to waste time, you know, blasting out to people who aren't likely to buy, you go after right after it. And so I have seen people, um, you know, upload um, very specific buyer lists into smart dialer so that they can rapidly call them when they've got a hot deal. And that works really well. And then of course, the final bit is we've got a beta product that is absolutely designed for the disposition process uh, in broadcast where you will able be able to, in an A2P 10 DLC compliant way, uh, load up buyer lists, get them to opt into receiving text messages, and then uh, bulk message them when you've got a hot pro property and you're doing it in a compliant way, which is some, which is tailor-made for disposition. What's the, what, what's the ETA for the beta product do you think as far as the beta is live? The the, the yeah the beta is live we 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 uh, we've got our sm a, a very uh, small uh, beta group I can probably add one or two more people and that's it because we don't like to have big yeah. beta groups uh, that are uncontrolled uh, but the beta group is live we are going through the process of setting it up with them now so that we can understand the good the bad the ugly how we can improve it. Uh, and then once we've gone through the beta process, which I assume will take uh, probably a month and a half, two months, potentially, uh, we are going to be looking to uh, launch that product out to uh, to everybody who wants it. So about three three or four months. And that's about yeah. our timeline, our, our timeline as well. There's a there, uh, the, the way I put it is there's a handful of things that we're working on when it comes to like the dispo process, um, KPI reporting. Um, user reporting, like if you have a lead manager versus an acquisitions manager, like being able to see their stats and data more clearly in our system. We have some KPI stuff there, but more clearly poor role and then some role permissions that we're working on. And um, our ETA is the end of the year. Like most of this stuff we'll probably have done September October um, in that 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 time frame, but we're you know into the year is an easy way to just kind of put a timeline on the things that we're doing. We have I would say off the top of my head four major projects that I feel like are going to fundamentally change um, it, it's the system in a way that'll make what everybody's doing a lot easier and a lot easier to make money. And uh, and, and the, in the end of the year is a good time frame to kind of put on that. So, but some of those things will come out beforehand. So I think we're kind of in line with you guys. I think you guys will come out about the same time. We're ready to plug you in and see how it works together. Fantastic. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, the next question has two parts. I'm actually going to take the second part first because it's sort of related to texting. Um, does smartphone have a text campaign capability and the ability to schedule texts for specific dates and times? Uh, so as a core, uh, this this is where uh, this is where I suddenly got scared and I'm I'm racking my brains about it. As a core functionality, no. Um, uh, number one, because there are. Uh, there are so if you're not using it in a compliant way, uh, you've got to be very careful around things like that. Um, we are looking at certain elements around scheduling, um, but that is been built into broadcast. So, for instance, for the buyer for the buyers, uh, where you are pushing out a bulk message to the disposition to your buyer list, there is scheduling for that. So you'll be able to, um, you know, and and actually, as an aside to that, one of the powerful things about broadcast is you're able to bring in different sources of buyers. You know, say you've got them from different locations or you've got uh, different lists, whatever. But one of the features of broadcast is your ability to create different texting lists. And what that means is you can take all your buyers and then you can filter that down and say, you know, only give me a list of the buyers who are in this area or who like this type of property or this price range, right? And that makes sure that when you schedule your kind of 
uh, your pushes, your market, your disposition pushes from a text message point of view to your buyers, you're able to hyper target that as well. Not only can you schedule it, but you can schedule it into a very, very specific list so that you know you're texting the right people. Because I personally would rather text 300 people who I know are interested in that location at that price range in that property type than I would send a text to 20,000 people who eight, you know, 19,000 of them don't, don't even want to go in that area. Why are you, why are you spending the money on 19,000 texts, right? So uh, that's another feature of broadcast is the ability to schedule, but the ability to focus that as well. Um, I will also say yeah. that, yeah, if, if it becomes something as the integration with Forefront continues to evolve and add more features and functionality, there is the opportunity to create uh, that we could come up with ideas of automations when something moves from one stage to the next, then it triggers a message, you know, things like that, that, so there's some texting automation that I know we have the ability to on our side, we would just need to work with the forefront team to figure out when or why and how we would want to program that, that kind of stuff in. So certainly automated texting is something that's possible. Um, we would just need to, to, to map it out. Yeah. We have some of those automations in our system. So, and when it, can we talk about follow-up trip campaigns and different things like that? So when something moves to, from one stage to the next, or you initiate a, an automated campaign, there is some email sequences and text sequences that go out on, on certain timed um, intervals. Um, and those, you know, from short-term follow-up to long-term follow-up that are built into the system. Obviously, you know, we're working to make sure that we stay within compliance and those kind of things. Um, but they are there to be used by the user as part of the system. I'm, I'm a firm believer in having automations in your follow-up. If somebody's reached out to you and they've had interest in, 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 in having a conversation with you and they've opted in, um, you know, there's got to be a, a balance between personal re outreach and ha personally having a conversation with those sellers and, their, and the automations as well, the email sequences and text campaigns and used in tandem is a great resource for closing deals. So, and those things are in the forefront system that we just trigger, trigger that in smartphone to happen. So. Awesome. Awesome. And then yeah. the first part of the question was, uh, does smartphone have a power dialer as well? We've made mention of smart dialer several times, so uh, we should probably say yes. <laughs> uh, yeah, we, we do. Uh, we, we have a, a single and multi-line dialer. The single line dialer um, uh, is uh, $50 a month per uh, seat. And the multi-line dialer is $90 a month per seat. Uh, obviously with the multi-line dialer, you can dial up to four lines at once. Um, you do, I mean, I know there are, th there are times when people have come to me and asked that, can we do like, can we dial 20 at once? Well, if you're dialing 20 at once, you've either got a really bad list, <laughs> uh, you know, and, and you're gonna have problems that way. Uh, the truth of the matter is the dialer is there, you know, a dialing capability is there to be the most efficient way of, of working your way through a list of people. Um, and you wanna do that in a way that actually connects your agents to people, not just incessantly dials people, but the, the smart dialer is a phenomenal um, uh, addition to smartphone. And one of the things that we do with our integration with Forefront is obviously you can upload lists directly into smart dialer. Um, and then uh, you're able to actually push a lead into Forefront once you have got uh, confirmed, you know, you've qualified that lead. And I, I really believe that's important because for me, keeping your data inside your CRM, inside a forefront clean means that you're able to make good decisions. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, I definitely recommend checking out Smart Dialer if you're interested. Um, well, that is the end of our questions that are live right now um, that we've seen in the Q&A section. Um, if anybody else has one, you are welcome to type it. But if you want to just raise your hand, we can then invite you on live and you're, you can ask it that way. See if we have a shy audience or not. You know, I want to... Um... I don't want to sound like I'm saying this is to say it. This is actually the truth when I say it. Um, we were with, we were using, utilizing a different dialer and we were dialing out and our, our callers were working eight hours a day and they were only hitting a certain threshold of dials a day. And we went back to that dialer multiple times trying to figure out what 
the what the issue was, why we weren't achieving the number of dials a day that we needed to achieve that made sense for that seat, right? And um, at, you know, out of frustration, we ended up moving over to the smart dialer, and um, you know, ultimately um, we three x the amount of dials a day, actually almost four x the amount of dials a day out that we were getting per seat, um, and so. Um, you know, and that's, you know, when, when things aren't working right, that makes a huge difference in your business. Like if you're on a phone system where you have lag in the call and you're stepping on each other, you can't negotiate properly, that hurts your business. When you're, we're not getting dials out per day, that hurts your business. So, um, you know, when all things are working right and you're able to make money, it's huge. And, and so our personal experience as an organization with smartphone um, has always been, you know, a, a good experience. And uh, like I said, I'm not just saying it to say it. It's, it's we've used smartphone for five years, and there's reasons why. So, love to yeah. hear it. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> we did get a new question. Same uh, same person who was in, was asking before about how do you leave an existing CRM, keep your smartphone account, and bring it over to Forefront, and was curious about Forefront pricing. on forefront pricing oh that forefront pricing no, I th okay yeah that, that, for me i heard smartphone pricing um so forefront has uh, three different plans um, we have a starter plan for 99 dollars, which is um, a great plan to start with if you are somebody on the newer side of the business and it has pretty much everything you need to run your business if you're looking for more features um then we have a pro plan for 199 and that pro plan has all kinds of really cool things from advanced automations, automated follow-up campaigns, uh, unlimited lead sources, advanced property data, you name it, advanced KPI recording, team member task management. I mean, I can go on and on and on about all the cool stuff that has. And then if you're really a beast of an organization, this is really more for organizations that have a lot of users and a lot of data than um, our elite plan is two ninety nine. So, um, you know, we, we're priced. You know, we we did a lot of research and, and we're priced extremely competitively. And we're always working hard to provide way more value so that we become a no brainer um, yeah, as we go along. So, our starter plan though for somebody brand new would be ninety nine dollars. Great. Uh, anybody else? Uh, we had a, we had a question, but um, Nina Babe uh, answered it. It was a question about when you get inbound text messages, where do they go? So you they come into the inbox and you get the notification just like you do um, with other inbound communications. So that was already answered. You know, and I'll throw I'll throw I'll throw one out there. You know, if anybody on here that has not a forefront user that wants to go ahead and sign up for forefront, if you use Flip seventy five at checkout, you get seventy five percent off your first month. So. We'll just throw it out there to check us out and, uh, you know, and see if you love us. I know you will. Uh, and actually, as a Forefront user, uh, if you want, are interested in uh, trying smartphone out with Forefront, we have a code as well, um, which I'm sure Ellen is going uh, to yeah, look up and post into the thing. I, I I'm pretty sure it's Forefront 30, but it's 30% I, 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 off the, for three months, but I have to... Yeah. And it works with both smartphone and smart dialer. So uh, the, you can get 30% off for three months of both products, uh, which means you can really uh, yes. get three months to, to make sure you can get it off the ground and working as best as possible for you. Yes, I was correct. It is Forefront 30. Okay, so smartphone, 30% off for three months. Oops. Oops. Okay. Um, forefront 30. It doesn't sound like we've got any more questions are we oh my god um uh nope doesn't i don't see any more questions coming okay. in um but uh, everybody if you do have questions in the future please know that our support is available from smartphone you can do it if you have an account you can do it from your mobile um, app you can do it from the web app or um you can do it from just smartphone.io you're welcome to come in. We are here 12 hours a day, 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. on weekdays, so Monday through Friday. If you have any other questions that come to mind about smartphone, smart dialer, about the future of broadcast, all of those things, um, please don't hesitate to reach out. We are there. Our support team has, um, you know, an answer. Our, our, our current answer rate is like one minute, so um, we Less. really are there. 
less than one minute uh, and they compete on that. So it yeah. keeps getting better. And um, so we really pride ourselves in that. You're not gonna fill out a form and have it disappear into the ether and hope you hear back in two weeks. Like we are there, we, we wanna hear from you. We wanna help you out. Um, so if you have additional questions and they're, they pop up later, let us know. Yeah, let me just add that our, you know, our support team has uh, got a really good relationship with smartphone support, for, smartphone support team as well. So if you're a Forefront user and you're having any challenges within the system, make sure you're checking with our support team. They may have the answer for you uh, before you even have to go to smartphone. And if you don't, they'll definitely help point you in the right direction or even reach out for you on your behalf. So um, on both sides, we're going to work very hard to make sure this is a good transition, a good relationship, and um, that you are happy at the end of the day getting what you need. So. Absolutely. Well, uh, listen, uh, I want to thank everybody who came on tonight. Uh, I especially I want to thank uh, Maria for popping on with us and uh, helping to show uh, the connection between smartphone and forefront. And of course, Ellen for um, for hosting and for helping us out with explanations and with the questions. And finally, of course, Don, uh, you know, I've known Don now for probably about a year we when we first uh, met and it's always a pleasure uh to to get a chance to chat with you and i'm so excited uh about the integration between smartphone and forefront and what we can build together so thank you for coming on tonight and uh i thank you for the continued uh partnership likewise i can't wait to see what we do together thanks everybody right. thanks everybody thank you. Thank you.